So one company that's been getting discussed a lot lately is Ulta Beauty. This is a company that was once looked at very positively by investors. It was a high quality business with long term compounding potential and the stock price reflected that for a very long time. But recently some concerns have been raised over their market share starting to decrease and profit margins starting to decline, which has led to them being down 33% year to date and actually puts them as the ninth worst performing company in the S&P 500 so far this year. Now, the company has historically traded at a premium valuation, typically with a P.E. ratio of about 30, but they currently have a P.E. ratio of about 13, so more than 50% below the historical average, whereas the average for other specialty retail companies is around a 10 P.E. ratio. But P.E. ratios are based off of earnings from prior years, and what we're investing in is the future. Now, when you have large swaths of these value investors that are all declaring that this one particular company, which is Ulta in this case, is undervalued, I think some alarm bells should start ringing in your head because, yes, the company does appear to be cheap at the surface right now, but it could also be cheap for a legitimate reason. We've recently seen companies like Lululemon and Nike, basically any sort of high-end consumer brand, have all been reporting very poor quarters recently and have seen very sharp sell-offs in their stock prices. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that all of these companies are undervalued just because they've gone down recently. It could just mean that before, investors were overestimating their growth potential a little bit. So in this video, we're going to answer the question, is Ulta actually undervalued like many people are saying that it is? Or is the recent sell-off actually justified? So without further ado, let's just dive right in. So let's start with a bit of background on this company. So Ulta is a US-based beauty retailer. They source products from about 600 different brands, ranging from a variety of different price points, both low-end and high-end. And their business model is to be a one-stop shop for all beauty products at all price ranges, and to also build a loyal customer base. They have a member rewards program, which has over 43 million members, and members make up about 95% of their sales. And considering they only operate in the US, having 40 3 million members is quite remarkable. And the company does serve a essential need to an extent. As weird as it is to say, the business of beauty is something that is never going to go away. So because they have this very wide selection of products from pretty much all the major brands that people would be looking for at all these different price points, I don't really see a whole lot of fashion risk or really product assortment risk associated with this company. Unlike, say, a clothing retailer where they have to have the right styles in stock, they have to have the right colors in stock, otherwise their sales will suffer. With a company like Ulta, I would consider it more on the range of a essential retailer as opposed to a more cyclical, a fashion type of retailer. And the U.S. market is quite large, currently estimated to be worth about $112 billion in total. So from 2020 to 2023, Ulta saw unprecedented expansion. Revenue almost doubled, going from $6 billion to $11 billion, and profit went from $176 million to $1.3 billion. And they did this while only growing their asset base about 12% during this time. And operating margins were consistently higher coming out of the lockdown year 2020 than they were in the prior period. They went from about 13% to 16% in the peak year, which was 2022 for them. And Ulta was consistently reporting return on invested capital in the 25% plus range, with the exception of 2020. And the median of this metric for retail businesses overall is about 11%. So they were a very strong company. So coming out of 2023, everything was going very well for Ulta. Now, what were the main drivers of this unprecedented expansion that they saw? Well, as for any retailer, it comes down to two main things opening new stores and same store sales growth. Over this time period, they opened 130 new stores across the US and they currently sit at about 1,400 total stores and comparable sales growth was consistently in the double digits. Now we can't really rely on data from 2020 and 2021 since those were the lockdown years, but throughout all of 2022 and even going into 2023, which was after stores had been open for about a year, it was still going very strong in the double digit percent range on a year over year basis. And this was really because Ulta was becoming more popular with consumers. In fact, their market share increased during this time from about 24% in 2019 to 26% in 2023, which puts them as the market leader in the beauty retailing industry. So as a result, investors began seeing Ulta as a very high quality business. 
But then in 2024, the company had a few bad earnings reports that made investors rethink that whole thesis. Initially, we started seeing some signs of this in 2023, where comparable sales growth began slowing. Now, this number does consist of two key parts, which are transactions growth and growth in average ticket or average purchase size per customer. Average ticket started to decrease very slightly in early 2023 after several quarters of strong growth, but investors didn't really react too much to this because the number of transactions was still growing strong. But then transactions growth started to decrease as well, and it looked really bad in Q1 of 2024 when they reported just a 1.6% increase in comparable sales with a 1.3% increase in transactions, so much lower than it had historically been. And the reason they gave for this was mainly due to competition. They said, there's been over 1,000 new points of distribution opened in the last two years. Additionally, prestige brands, so higher end brands, are expanding their online availability as digital penetration grows in the category, which has lowered Ulta's market share. And also because the makeup category specifically, which makes up about 44% of their total business, was down in the mid single digits year over year in that quarter, mainly due to lower sales of high end brands, which fits the whole trend we've been seeing across the entire US economy of consumers cutting back on luxury purchases. So looking at this in the context of Ulta's valuation, they were seen as the dominant force in the industry before, but now we're starting to see competition actually keep them in check. So clearly, the sentiment has shifted. Now, in my opinion, the one critical question that needs to be answered is what is actually going on in the U.S. economy right now? Are we in a recession or aren't we? And if we are, what are spending habits going to look like in this specific industry over the next couple of years? One thing that's become pretty clear is U.S. consumers are not purchasing luxury goods right now. I think the recent earnings reports from Nike and Lululemon alone are enough to demonstrate this, but you can look at pretty much any high-end retailer and see that they're reporting weak sales in the US. But Ulta doesn't just offer luxury items, they offer products from all different price points, and that's been their business model from the very beginning. Now, in the recent weeks, the worries of a recession have certainly increased, especially after the most recent U.S. jobs report came out and the U.S. unemployment rate ticked up much more than expected. But what's interesting to note is that the beauty retailing market has historically held up very well during recessions. There's actually something called the lipstick effect, where even during recessions, consumers will still purchase small luxury items such as beauty products. So consumers will cut back on larger luxury expenses, but they still purchase these so-called affordable luxuries and also specific products like skincare or personal care items are more seen as essential goods that will always have stable demand even during recessions. If we take a look at Ulta's numbers during the 2008 recession, we can see that revenue growth was still increasing in the double digits throughout this whole time period. And 2008 was a time where unemployment was much higher, peaking at 9% in 2009, and retail sales as a whole plunged about 11% year over year at one point. Now, this is partly because Ulta was still in the rapid expansion phase and they were still gaining a lot of popularity during this time. So part of their growth is really due to that. But it still goes to show how resilient this industry can be, that they were able to achieve this even during a time where there was so much economic stress happening. And what we saw in their Q1 2024 report was that revenue did grow 3.5% year over year, which was 1.9% from opening new stores and 1.6% from comparable store sales growth. So they are still seeing some organic growth. And I think it'll be interesting to see what these numbers look like when they report Q2 results later this month. So we'll wait and see for that. I think the problem investors see with Ulta right now is only partially due to the macro conditions in the US economy, because it does mean that they are going to see less sales from high end items. But I think it's more so due to two other things. One is because they've opened up so many stores in the US that they're starting to see some early signs of market saturation. And two, they're losing market share to competition. Now, the reason why I think there's some signs of saturation is because, for one, they're not opening as many stores as they were in the past. From 2013 to 2019, they were opening about 100 new stores per year, which is basically a new store opened every three days, so expanding very rapidly. But now it's gone down to about 60 new stores per year from their guidance, and there is an inherent limit they'll reach in the U.S. before new stores begin cannibalizing sales from existing stores. Now, no one knows exactly what that limit is, but Ulta themselves has said that they think it's around 1,500 to 1,700 total stores. And considering now that they have about 1,400 total stores as of their latest report, 
they can probably open up about 60 new stores per year until the end of 2028, which would put them at 1700 total in the US. So the high end range of that limit that they themselves have stated. So then the natural next step for them would be to expand internationally, which they have recently announced plans in 2025 to open a new store in Mexico, which is good to see, but it shows that the company is still in the very early innings of international expansion. And it's probably going to be a while before we see any real growth from this. And they did previously try to expand into Canada back in 2020, but they backed out of those plans to focus more on the US market. And then the second point is the loss of market share to competition. No company operates without competition, and in Ulta's case, although they do have a very strong brand and very wide product assortment, there isn't really a moat to their business. Customers can purchase from them or they can purchase from any different retailer like Amazon, for example. They can buy direct from the brand itself. The point is that they have plenty of options and Ulta is just another option. They are just a retailer at the end of the day, and it is very difficult for retailers to build economic moats. Really, the only companies that come to mind, in my opinion, are companies like Costco and Walmart, basically companies that offer consumers the lowest possible prices out there, which took them a long time to build up. And in a way, customers are forced to shop at those locations because they know that they can save a lot of money doing that. Whereas with Ulta, there's nothing really forcing customers to shop there. You could maybe argue that customers will go there for the in-store experience that they offer, which may have some value. But personally, I don't really see that as a enduring competitive advantage. Ulta's biggest competitor would be Sephora, which is owned by LVMH and reported in their selective retailing segment and Sephora had 8% revenue growth for the first half of 2024 and they even stated that they gained market share. Now Sephora is a global brand whereas Ulta is just in the US but the US is probably one of Sephora's largest markets so it's likely that they did gain some market share on Ulta during this time and this also feeds into their profit margins. If we look at what operating margins have been in the recent quarters we can notice that they're starting to decline a little bit and the company company guided for about 14% operating margins next year versus back in 2022 when it was closer to 16%. And the reason they said for this is that they expected it to be lower because of higher promotion expense, which to me is a sign of competitive pressures. They have to spend more money on marketing now versus in the past to keep customers coming into their stores. So yes, the company does look cheap right now relative to historical valuation metrics. But if the company isn't growing as fast as it was in the past, its margins are declining, its market share has decreased a little bit lately and they're starting to reach saturation in the US and not able to open up as many new stores as they were previously, then guess what? The company isn't going to trade at its historical multiples. So valuing the company based on that is ultimately setting yourself up for failure. We have to value this company based on what it actually is today, which is still the market leader in this space but one where growth has slowed down a little bit and competition from things like online retailers is starting to pick up. So now let's try and understand Ulta's current valuation because the goal of value investing in general is to compare the price you're paying for a company with the value that you're getting for it. And in the case of Ulta, I think this is a pretty easy business to understand overall. And with just a little bit of analytical work, we can get a pretty good idea of what their next five years is gonna look like. So let's start with top line revenue and project this over the next five years. Now, projecting revenue for any retail business involves understanding a few key things. The comparable sales growth rate, how many new stores they plan on opening each year, and the average revenue per new store. They did give guidance for 2024, which is to open about 60 new stores within the year, and they expect to see comparable sales growth of about two to 3%. Now they haven't really given any sort of long-term guidance, but I think under the new competitive landscape, we have to assume that comparable sales growth in the future is going to be lower than it was in the past. So I'm going to assume comparable sales growth will be 3% per year over the next five years, which is probably conservative, but still reasonable in my opinion. And before we mentioned that opening 60 new stores per year would get them to 1,700 stores by the end of 2028, which is approaching what we'd expect to be their limit in the US. So after this point, new stores could still probably come from the US a little bit, but international expansion is going to have to be more of a factor. Now, based on their 2023 numbers, they're doing just over $8 million in annual revenue per store. 
So under these assumptions, it works out to about 6.6% revenue growth per year, which would mean $15.4 billion in annual revenue by fiscal 2028. And if they can keep their operating margins at 14% during this time, which is lower than what it's been over the past few years, but again, management did guide for 14% next year and stated that due to competition, they're having to increase spending on promotions, which does put operating margins under pressure. So under those assumptions, I would estimate Alta is currently worth about $345 per share versus a current share price of $322. So slightly undervalued, but certainly not a screaming buy by any means. And by the way, this assumes a 9x exit multiple, which I've used the enterprise value to EBITDA multiple, which is about what their current multiple is. And it also assumes a 10% discount rate. And by the way, if you'd like to access this full Excel file that I'm showing on screen here to use this model and adjust it for yourself, feel free to join my Discord group, which is where I've posted it. Link is in the description. Now, some people watching this may think that these assumptions for Ulta are too conservative. So let's change a few things and see how our estimate of intrinsic value per share changes. Let's instead assume 6% growth in comparable sales over the five years and a 15% operating margin. Under these new assumptions, with everything else kept the same, we get a nice intrinsic value of $420 per share. So here it actually looks more undervalued, but clearly investors don't believe that they're going to achieve this based on the way it's valued today, which is much lower than this price point. But personally, I don't think this is out of reach because this market overall is projected to see about 6% growth per year over the next couple of years. So all Ulta has to do is not lose market share while still opening 60 new stores per year, and they can reasonably achieve this. So that does it for the video guys. I hope you did find this useful. One last quick thing I wanna mention for those of you who are new to my channel is I do have a website called tickernomics.com that I showed a few times throughout this video. We have data on over 10,000 stocks, both Canadian companies, US companies, and international stocks as well. We have financial data like we're seeing here. We also have a DCF feature, which allows you to input assumptions and you can calculate the intrinsic value of companies based on revenue, margin, et cetera, those kinds of assumptions. And we also have a bunch of scripts, which are custom lists that you can generate to help you find new investment ideas and research into different companies. So if you are interested, link is in the description of this video. So feel free to check it out if you'd like. But yeah, that does it for this video. So thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.